Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Thaxton, a board-certified plastic surgeon, and I'm going to talk to you today about the myths and truths of facelifts. Frequently what I get in a consultation is, I want a mini facelift, and usually what that person means is that they don't want something that's going to make them look unnatural. They feel pretty good about how they look already, but they just want something to make them look a little bit fresher. So, and they're worried about looking like some stars who have had facelifts that have made them look very unnatural, and they don't want that. Well, the truth of the matter is that a mini facelift often means that it's someone who doesn't have a lot of experience and they attempt to do a facelift just by pulling on the skin, which can give you a very unnatural look. A real facelift or a facelift that is going to achieve what someone is searching for is going to reposition the soft tissues underneath the skin and then just redrape the skin in a natural way to take out any laxity to the skin, but not counting on the skin to hold the deeper structures. Um, what happens when you try to pull on the skin to hold the deeper structures is initially you may have something that looks pretty natural for a few months, but very quickly the skin stretches out and the soft tissues descend again because the skin was never designed to hold them up. And then as things loosen up, you start getting the pulled on windblown look that people are trying to avoid. A well done facelift will change the underlying soft tissues of the face and make it look more youthful, pulled back up and revolumized to the point where someone looked at a younger age without changing their natural appearance. A well done facelift will be done so that someone who doesn't know you won't know that you've had a facelift and those who do know you will think they've had something done but I can't put my finger on exactly what it is but they look fresher more rested and younger. A well done facelift will mean that someone who doesn't know you won't know that you've had a facelift and someone who does know you well but hasn't seen you during your recovery phase will know you've had something done, but won't know exactly what it is. They will still think you look very natural. Another myth that I occasionally get is, well, I'm too old to have a facelift, or I'm not old enough to have a facelift. And while it's true, if you're young enough, facelift may not be the right procedure before you, or if you're old, you might have health con conditions that make face a facelift somewhat dangerous. There is no specific age that you've become too old or you're too young. It depends on what your needs are. One of my favorite stories was when I was a resident in New York City uh, in training and we had a guest lecturer come in from Paris and he showed photos of his facelift patient who had gone through her seventh facelift as I remember it. She was 104 years old. She was a retired actor and every six or seven years she would come back in to have um, a little bit of touching up she was still very active she was still a scuba diver at 104 years old so she wanted to look as good as she felt and she would routinely get it and in spite of having seven facelifts she still had a very natural look she looked age appropriate but very refreshed for her age another myth that i get is that well, I'm coming to a plastic surgeon because I don't want any scars. Well, while I would love to be able to offer surgery without a scar, a scar is how we heal. The key to scars is putting them in places where they're inconspicuous or can be concealed. And for each individual, I can discuss where I can put the scar so that it's hidden by hair or in the hairline or uh, strategically located around the ear so that it is very well concealed. One of the myths that I occasionally encounter is someone who says, well, I'm going to go away to a resort where I can just have my facelift and, and recover and then come back and everybody will not know that I've had a facelift. That's all fine as long as you get a quality result or a quality procedure done for your facelift. The problem with exotic resorts is that you may get caught up in the glossy photos but you don't necessarily know what the experience or the credentials of the surgeon are. By far and away, the most important part of a facelift decision-making process is getting a surgeon who has the credentials and the experience to provide a facelift that will give you long-lasting natural results uh, with minimal risk of complications. 
Facelifts are not without risks, but with an experienced surgeon, those risks can be minimized and usually can be managed if some minor complication occurs without any long-term consequences. The way to find a experienced surgeon for your facelift is first start with someone who's certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery, and then more specifically, somebody who is a member of the Aesthetic Society, which is a group of plastic surgeons who are focused primarily on aesthetic surgery and do the majority of their procedures for aesthetic purposes. Another myth that I occasionally get is that a facelift must be extremely painful because you're getting operated on your face. The reality is, is that it's typically not a very painful operation. I've had several patients who I have performed facelifts on who said I didn't need any pain medicine other than Tylenol and even that I could have done fine without. Uh, the recovery from a facelift is usually not too bad and the usual recovery is really related to social presentability. Um, you may be socially uncomfortable going out because of the bruising and swelling for a couple of weeks but pretty quickly the bruising and swelling go down and most people are feeling okay to go out and be seen in public within about two weeks. So the process for going through uh, the process of getting a facelift uh, in my practice. Essentially you call, schedule an appointment, we find a time that works where there's plenty of time for me to sit down with you, discuss what you're looking for, what you would like to achieve, what bothers you and I'll go over the things that I think uh, would be beneficial for, for um, treating the things that are bothersome to you. Um, that may involve some preoperative skin care, it may involve a facelift or brow lift or eyelid surgery or some combination of those, possibly some sort of resurfacing procedure. And then once we have gone through all that and I go through photos of before and after pictures of some of my patients, we can come up with a treatment plan very tailored specific for the individual. And then uh, there will be another visit prior to the operation. That way, if you come up with other questions, have other concerns, have had time to think about it, come back, we discuss it again. And at that point, um, we have a plan for executing the operation. The operations are done um, in my accredited operating room in my office. Yeah. So also with a facelift, usually there's some sort of skin rejuvenation uh, that the patient would benefit from. That may involve um, some sort of resurfacing at the time of the facelift, or it may be just preoperatively preparation uh, with a, a effective skincare regimen with various um, skincare products. So what's the process? So if you have an interest in a facelift or some sort of facial rejuvenation, call my office. We'll get you set up with an appointment to sit down and discuss what your concerns are, what you would like to have uh, treated, and then we'll come up with a plan, which may include a facelift, may include other surgical procedures, or maybe something less invasive. We may be able to do something with just injectables or some other minimally or non-invasive treatment. Ultimately, once we have come up with a plan um, that meets your expectations, you can decide what you want to do and we can schedule further treatment. So if facial rejuvenation is something you're interested in, stay tuned to my channel. Uh, there will be some future videos on other procedures. There are already some other videos on other procedures uh, that I do for facial rejuvenation. And you may find something besides a facelift that ultimately uh, meets your needs. So stay tuned.